with Keegan Linehan. Welcome back, buddy. San Antonio from the 19th floor in the beautiful Holiday Inn <laughs> Express. <laughs> How you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm, I'm good. You know, it was great doing the podcast for the All-Star Game in Virginia Beach because mm-hmm. the Founders Inn was a beautiful place. They had that nice terrace and that courtyard area and the pool and the mm-hmm. pond. And you're just like, I'm from live from the beautiful Founders Inn and here I am. I'm up on a much higher floor, right. but it's like I'm at Holiday Inn. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know how to sell that like it's some you know big deal right here, but uh, I've had the song Holiday Inn stuck in my head all week. Oh, so. boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sitting chilling at the Holiday <laughs> Inn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. That's my jam. <laughs> That's what I needed right there. there thank you, you. Thank you very much for that. I thought I was going to be all alone in that. And people were going to be like, what kind? What in the name of 90s hip-hop are you talking about? And I'd be like, hey, <laughs> don't hate the player at the camera. That's right. <laughs> so, football in Texas, San mm-hmm. Antonio, 103, feels like 125 with That's the humidity. Right. How are you holding up? Well, the, the heat is a little bit different from where I'm from because I'm from southeastern region of Oklahoma. But really, I played in weather. You know, it's a little bit similar, but it's not as humid. And it, it well, from the past couple of days of practices, I could really tell that I haven't played in the heat in so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that. You guys were melting out there in practice today, and you know, I, I don't know because I haven't been around him enough. But Coach Burns, is it, was it the heat today, or is he always that just, like, pissed off at everybody? I'd say the second one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I don't even think he saw Dr. Payne yet, man. That, I don't know. <laughs> have you seen Dr. Payne while you're here yet? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you're like, well, uh-uh. well, they said, try, you know, it, if you do it, you're risking it. So, risking <laughs> to feel the pain. But I don't want to feel the pain. <laughs> You know, when it comes to him, I was talking to him a little bit this morning, uh, both before we left for practice and then while we were at the practice. And you can, there's certain things you pick up, pick up on from people. And, and with him, I could pick up that it's like, in the back of his mind, he gets some kind of enjoyment out of uh, the, these big football players just writhing in pain. Mm-hmm. Just, ah! Hey, I, I've seen the videos and pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got like some smile on the back of his face, and all the guys are like, "Stop smiling, you jerk!" Right? But you know, it could be worse. You guys could not have a team doctor, and I, I can't imagine worst case scenario what that would be like for you guys to be out there practice, a community event, even, um, mm. and then God forbid the game itself, and somebody goes down, and there's nobody to to get you guys right. I mean, that's just uh, you know not something you want. So. Although he might bring the pain, he is here for a good cause, and uh, I'm happy about that. You guys are going to play TUFA, Mm -hmm. which is the Texas All-Stars team. It's going to be pretty stiff competition, of course. The last game you guys played each other, which was what some of you might call the best competition you can have is against yourself. Mm -hmm. But, you know, let's be real here. We're uh, back to what you guys have said is business as usual. It's right. you guys against the next man up. Like, mm-hmm. who's got next? Tufa. What do you think? You know? Well, just just got to play our best. Really, if they if they are good or if they're not good, it doesn't matter. We have to come out with our head, head on our shoulders and be ready to just play our best. For you guys, you know, obviously – you're very confident in your squad as a whole. Mm-hmm. But for you as a player, do you have your own certain set of expectations for yourself where, I mean, you guys could win 45 to nothing, but you missed an assignment, missed a block, mm-hmm. missed a tackle, a ball, whatever. Like, Do you have your own personal assessment of how you feel you did in the game once it's over? Yes, I always do. And there's always film to help me out to see what – what I've done good and what I've done bad, what I need to change up and what I can do to improve myself. And just like from the Virginia Beach game, I watched the game over and over again just to see what I need to change up. 
and I've been working, I've been trying to work on what I needed to improve, and it has improved just a little bit, but there's always something to work on. Yeah, I could see that. And as far as what there is to work on, I mean, you play ball back home like with a, a regular spring or fall league, so you got uh, quite a, a bit of time between you know what right. what didn't work for you at one event and what you got to fine tune and tweak for the next. How do you keep yourself honest in that kind of situation? Well, you, coming from McAllister, Oklahoma, we don't have a team within I want to say about an hour away. I I think the like if there if I was to play for a semi pro team, it would have to be out of town, and that's that's pretty. It's a pretty big distance to just go back and forth like every week, and it, it, I just can't do that. So, as a fitness trainer for my job occupation, there's always time for me to just train myself, whether it's strength training or conditioning. I get that. I can see that. Mm-hmm. So, you want to be better by making yourself better, even if it's not football specifically yes basically live a happier healthier life yeah physically mentally so in your mind you correlate you know a better physical Mm well-being up to better mental well-being right you think you look good feel good you know you do life good i Mm -hmm. guess (laughs) (laughs) you can life better if you look better feel better well, that's good, man. I'm glad to hear that you've got, you know, even if it's not playing opportunities back home, at least you've got some matter of self-accountability yes. you know, that you can go back to and take what you've gotten from here. What are your biggest takeaways from an AFE event, other than obvious, you know, the the obvious, which we just talked about, and that's what you can do to improve yourself as an athlete for the next event. But, I mean, as far as day-to-day life, you know, what's, what's a big takeaway that you get each time you come here? I want to say it helps me become – more approachable to people because sometimes like going to these community events we could like us wearing our game jerseys and we're that everybody thinks we're like top notch and that sometimes they could be intimidated by our size and by our looks but at first thing we do we always want to approach them and welcome them just saying you know Hey, how are you doing today? It, you know, it puts a smile on people's faces. So it actually helps me become more of a people person, as you call it. So it just helps me become a better person to approach everyone like in the best way I can. Kind of, you know, I just want to have a good reputation of myself as well toward other people. That way they think, oh, well, he's not a bad guy at all. He's actually really nice, and he's willing to help and all this other, all that other good stuff. So for you, when it comes to events like the crit, Mm -hmm. which obviously requires a certain level of people skills, I mean, it's not that they're, like, approaching you, so to speak. It's that you're, like, in in the presence of people that don't know you. Right. Um, Yeah, we're strangers. Was that your first crit event yesterday? Yes, it was. It was. So you can kind of relate to what I was talking about earlier with one of the guys, and that's, you know, I didn't know what my reaction was going to be going in there because you can, like, mentally prep for what you think you're going to do or see when you go into something. I mean, it could be, like, a person visiting a burn ward. You know, right. like, you know what's in there, but you haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, I'm ready. And you get in there and you're like, I'm, I'm not ready. I wasn't ready. So I'm not saying that this was like that dramatic, but obviously you're dealing with children mm-hmm. that have had some matter of shortcoming in life, be it a birth defect, uh, born illness or disability or a disability that's happened throughout the course of their young life. And, and sometimes it's a tough pill to swallow because we're so used to seeing people be just what we know is normal. Right. And they're not what that definition is, but it doesn't make them any different from you and me. So what was your initial reaction when you got in there yesterday? Was it what you thought or was it kind of a more humbling feeling for you? Well, you, it it's like, I'm sure you heard this, but they, they always say life isn't fair. Yeah, and it it does it does hurt to see that these kids are they they have some limitation to where they are not able to do the same thing I can do. 
and I wish they would be able to do that. Yeah. And I think it's good for you guys to get out there and go and be heroes for a day. You right. Know, in the yes. eyes of these kids because – it speaks volumes about you, the program, and I think personally, I, I feel like a better person after yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like I'm more mentally prepared to deal with that more often. You know, if I was to make regular visits to something like that, or to because I, I know people that have kids with disabilities, and I've never like treated them any differently. It's just that I felt, I always felt like out of place because I don't interact with them on a daily basis, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm not their parent. I'm not one of their friends hanging out with them. It's like, I'm here. What, what's the right way to interact and what's the wrong way? You know, Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's odd to me and it's hard. And I think some people forget that and overlook that. So for AFE to include an event like that, more than just the one time, obviously in Cancun and now San Antonio. And to, you know, Virginia Beach, there was the ice cream social they brought them to Founders Inn. Mm-hmm. I think it's fantastic. So, obviously, you there's a lot that you can take away. Right. What, what's your favorite thing to take away each? Is it, is it the feeling at the end of the day, walking off the field, win, lose, or draw, that, you know, like you went out there and you checked everything off your own personal list, you know what you need to improve on, you're going to get back to it when you get home, or is it something else? Well, you know, one thing that I will that I will say is that it was great to see a smile on everyone's faces because it, when I was younger, if someone from like a professional professional organization was to come up to me, interact with me, I would I'd be kind of I'd be kind of scared a little bit. But then I feel I feel like it would be more, be more fun if I was to you know let them interact with me, and I think that's what the kids saw yesterday, for sure. So tonight we got the awards banquet, tomorrow mm-hmm. the game. How are you going to try to enjoy your last, you know, 24 hours with uh, with AFE here in uh, sunny and humid San Antonio? Just take all the time to spend with my teammates and the staff here because it's been a great trip so far, <laughs> and I'm just ready to play tomorrow night. All right, man. Well, hey, I'm happy to be on the call tomorrow. Good mm-hmm. luck out there. Thank you know, you. I hope you get a whole extra list of things to take back home with you to improve on. But hopefully it's not much because I want you to have a great game. That's obviously. right. Obviously, you know, that's the important thing for me. The better game you guys have, the more fun it'll be for me to call. So yes, go out sir. there and crush it, man. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Keegan Linehan, the machine, <laughs> AFB, San Antonio. All right, from the 19th floor of the Holiday Inn, we have our next contestant, Donnell Towers. How are you doing, man? Welcome. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing great, man. This is a uh, first time, which I, I love you first timers because it's a great icebreaker. I like to see how you react, if I catch you off guard or anything. <laughs> but it's all fun and games. And no, there's no until somebody loses an eye or whatever. It's, it's all fun and games here on the fan show. So. How many events does Sunny San Antonio make for you in AFV? Uh, how many events? Events? You said how many what? How many events? Like, which one is this for you? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is my <laughs> first event. I've never... Wow, so you're a rookie? Yeah, rookie. Man, oh, I don't get to talk to many rookies. <laughs> I gotta think, I gotta think. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, rookies are fun, man, because um, I'm always taken back by... One, what your expectation was and what you thought you were going to walk into. And obviously, we're asleep away from, from game day and what your experience has been like so far when you haven't even done what you came here to do, and that's play football against guys you don't know. So so walk me through this. You know, you you get the call from Coach G, and he sells you this amazing experience, and now you're here, or how's this work? Yeah. Uh, well, when I first heard about it, I actually tried for the Pueblo event. But uh, I had some financial issues I had to get through. And uh, Coach G and Marlon, you know, they constantly, constantly hit me up. We want you in this event. We want you in this event. So, you know, I finally was able to get it together and come down to San Antonio, right down the street from Houston is where I'm from. And uh, it's been it's been great. <laughs> I've never, I never really witnessed anything like this. Uh, the crit, how organized and everything is, it's just it's, it's really amazing. It really is. So for you, it's uh, here's this event that invites you that says they really want you to play, and they travel all over the country, hell, even the world, you know, Mexico, Costa Rica, 
and and you go your first one is is two hour drive from where you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you know, it's kind of I kind of want to basically kind of get my feet wet. You yeah, know, I come get out that. To, Come to San Antonio. Besides going to a whole other country, I had never been out of country, so it kind of, it's kind of scary. But you know, let me try the San Antonio bit first. So, as a local ish, you know, um, playing football first event. Is there anything that you would say that you know that even the veterans that aren't from Texas don't know? Like, is there any surprises that they're in for as far as how you guys do things in Texas? It's like a Texas code of football. <laughs> oh man. Just in, anything in Texas, man, we just go hard, man. <laughs> uh, whether it's sports, uh, drinking, anything. You know, we, just, <laughs> we just we we go hard, man. That's, that's how we do it. <laughs> I feel like there was a few things you could have put in between yeah, sports and but drinking, <laughs> but you just kind of skipped them. All. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, you know what? They just keep it real. Which is, <laughs> you know, we're just gonna we got ten minutes. We're just gonna cut the crap and just say what we got what we gotta say here. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you know any guys on the other team? The yes, TUFA? Uh, on, on on TUFA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I played with the Texas Colts last year, which we won the Super Bowl. So I played with like uh, Lyle Buckner, um, some players from the Mustangs as well, uh, Kendall. You know, just a few guys. Not, but I, I played in that league, so I pretty much know a lot of them. But I don't really like, you know, feel like talk to the people before. So competition on a scale of uh, Oregon to Texas, you know, because Oregon doesn't even have football you know except for i mean college football but let's let's be real they they don't do football like really any other state out there right. and and of course you got texas up here at 10 like it, what what are you guys in for competition wise you know uh, you know it's it's gonna be up there it's yeah. gonna be up there it's gonna be <laughs> i really look forward to it because you know like uh, a lot of the guys probably say you know we got a chip on our shoulder because we're not playing for texas we're playing for usa so to me it's a big thing because if they if we don't beat them, we're gonna hear it the whole till oh man forever. <laughs> I I can imagine. So I mean, there's no bragging rights like Texas bragging oh, rights. Oh yeah, it's not. It is no chill. It's no chill <laughs> at all. <laughs> and one thing that was missing from this event that I really thought there should have been was a media day where you sit down with the coaches from both squads and then their their star players from both squads and then you have everybody else in the room in attendance. Anybody can ask questions they want and you go for 30 minutes to an hour because some of the best moments come from media day. Yeah. And it's, you know, you guys may not interact for the whole rest of the time up until game day, but media day, that's where you get those, those little <laughs> shots in, you know, yeah. because you're there live in front of whoever wants to be there. And I, I think it, it's a great spark to what we're about to see out oh, on the yeah. field, oh, you know, yeah. especially if it's at the beginning of, of the week. So if this would have been Wednesday, you know, mm -hmm. you got Thursday, Friday, and now the game. But have you talked to any of the guys from the other team at all and oh, interacted? No, no. The closest interaction we've had was when they was at our practice field and we saw just a few players, but not really a lot. But other than that, no, I haven't really. So there hasn't been, like, any trap, no fun. In the, <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> Probably in the semi-pro football chat, if you was to probably scroll up and down, you would probably see <laughs> a, a few bad things in there. But I just try to stay away from all of that. I just focus on my game and focusing on this AFV event. So what is this event for you then? I, obviously, it took um, a few tries to get you to right. one of them. But, I mean, what once you walk off the field Saturday, win, lose, or draw, like what, what are you taking back home with you? What's what's the next step for Towers? Man, it's... it's been a blessing man because like to get into something like this is it's really hard to find you know a lot of people you know they do a little you know a little bad you know just just the organization in itself is just like a blessing to me like i'm going back home with probably five six ten uh, best friends not just regular friends but it's something that uh you know i've been really trying to look forward to like keep playing you know because it's been kind of hard with semi-pro and uh but just to find something that, you know, I can finally call, like, home and f feel good about it is just one thing that I think I can. Is there a team that you've got back home that you play for, you coach for, or anything in uh, that avenue? Uh, I play for the uh, the Houston Colts. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's pretty much all I have. But, <laughs> you know, I have my son and everything, so everything's kind of been focused on him. So, you know, <laughs> this is a good, you know, time for me. So what are you hoping you get out of AFU then? Is it uh, 
life lessons that you apply day to day, or is it uh, maybe somebody sees film on you and they offer you some opportunity at whatever the next level is? Like, where where do you see yourself using what you get while you're here? Yeah, you know, the film and you know everything is great, but mostly what I what I came here to do is like build character. You know, uh, try to find myself as a person. And, like, I use football my whole life, you know. Everybody play football their whole life. And, you know, for me, for football, I use it as, like, a, like as a character builder, you know. But <laughs> other than that, I just, I just want to play ball. <laughs> <laughs> I can respect that. I think that's really good because there's a lot of guys that, um, you know, I feel like, I don't want to say they're looking to take too much from it. Bro. But I also feel like they're almost overlooking the fact that you get to play football yeah you know at the end of it like that's the big finale is you competing out there on the field in a game that you clearly love you know that's why you're here so it's very good and reassuring to hear you say that you know i I get to play football you know on saturday i get to have a lot of fun what position are you out there uh running back running back yes (laughs) running backs um we were talking about game prep and how film is such a big thing, but there's not like a lot of archives or access to film for something like right. this. Like mm-hmm. I know that you guys aren't in meetings going over film from the other team. So as a skill position player, like how do you prep for a game like this? Um, for me, it's mostly mental. You know, if you go to a game, I mean, you can watch film on somebody, you know, over and over and over, and you know, but sometimes I mean, when it comes to defense, mostly to me, it's just about somebody being physical. Like, I can watch film on you over and over and over. I play running back. I don't play receiver, so I don't worry about, you know, what this DB is going to do, this and that. I'm worried about how this DN swims, how he makes his moves, how he do, do this and that. But I don't – film, it helps. But, I mean, to me, I, I with, especially with this league, I already know who am I going up against. So I've already kind of basically seen him in person play. Are you a guy that holds yourself accountable as far as, you know, your line is clearly going to try to make holes for you and get the guys out of the way, protect your quarterback, things like that. But how much self-accountability do you have going into a, something like this, especially your first event? Oh, yeah. Um, to me, the biggest thing is protecting the ball, hitting the hole. You know, you can – you know, I'm a new south runner. I'm not. I don't. I don't like to go outside of my zone. I'm not going to try to juke you and do all of this. You know, I'm just going to just run. Right? So I'm gonna get the yards and do what I got to do to help my team. You know, if I got to block a guy that's six five, four hundred pounds, you know, I'll do it. So to me, you know, it's just about helping my team out. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that for sure. And you know, there's going to be the um, events. Obviously, the the banquet and the dinner tonight. You excited for stuff like that? Like, what was your experience at the crit like, and everything that's happened off the field? Oh man, uh, the crit experience was definitely it kind of hit home, you know, because um, when you see when you see the kids, it makes it instantly makes you think of your kids, you know, if you want to like have kids, it makes you think of your kids. And when I see them, it's just like you know, I was blessed enough to have a son that's you know healthy. And then I wish, you know, if some parents can experience, you know, they were well, the, the parents that were sitting there, you know, I wish they would have, like, the same experience I have with my child, like, be able to do this and that instead of worry about doctor visits and try to go all the way out here and go out there. But it was great, you know, just to see them, you know, walk. you walk up to them and they're smiling. It's just, it was just crazy. Like, it was really crazy. Like, I never experienced something like that. I never had something to where, you know, uh, someone would come up to me and be like, hey, can you sign this for me? I never had that experience. So it was it was really great. <laughs> so before you even play the game, and we've had three days now of practices, community events, free time, seeing San Antonio, which I'm sure is like nothing new for you. Uh, you've yeah, probably been here a few I, times. I passed <laughs> through it. When I passed I was, through yeah, it. <laughs> I didn't really like look at it. But are you sold? Like, is this going to be the first of many? events for you or do you still have to see how the big grand finale plays out oh, tomorrow night? as of the, you know the game is a is a it is what we came here to do but in my mind i'm definitely going to be back <laughs> <watching this morning. laughs> 
It's good to hear, man. I'm really excited to see you play tomorrow. I'll be on the play uh, for the live stream for anybody watching back home. I imagine you probably have quite a bit of family and friends uh, showing up to attend. Be working and everything, but they're going to be watching the live stream. <laughs> okay, so I will be the voice on that call. So hopefully we get to call many a touchdown for you. Okay. We got to come up with something catchy, something snappy, but uh, we'll figure it out, man. I'm looking yes, forward to it. He is uh, Donnell Towers yes, sir. of Houston, Texas. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank. You. All right, more player one-on-ones. Welcome back, Jesse Bernhardt, Captain America, the cowboy himself, <laughs> Mr. Wisconsin. I don't know, man. You've got so many personas now. It's hard to keep up. Yeah, I, I guess I I just absorb all of them. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, when people say something like that, I oh, usually turn, I guess, now. So, because <laughs> they're usually talking about me. But, yeah, no, it's been it's been great been great so far down in san antonio yeah man and of course you went all texas you got yourself a nice expensive <laughs> custom fitted cowboy hat it looks good on you but you know it's uh it's not very wisconsin of you no but you know one in texas kind of a thing you know. <laughs> i think texas. i might blend in a little i'm I'd, I'd blend in if i if i got all texas uh Texas styled up. You know, I'd blend in, I think. Did you get a bolo tie? No. For tonight? No, I didn't get a bolo tie. I was, oh, fail. If, if there was one I would have found, I might have got one, but uh, I, I didn't end up finding one that I liked. So. You need a bolo tie with a replica of a cheese curd in it. Wow. That way you can <laughs> rep here but still be repping back home. Oh, definitely, 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 <laughs> definitely. So you're one of the more tenured vets of the AFE. In fact, I was joking around with uh, Anthony Rini yesterday, talking to him. I said there was a little bit of um, confusion between you, Jordan, and Anthony as far as who's been the more. You guys were like, wait, is this is this eight, nine, seven? Yeah. Wait, was that one? Did that count? Like, So have you been to the most? Are you the sole um, winner of that? No, I, I don't think I'm sole winner. Uh, I've only missed one. and um, I know Rini's been to a couple – that he's played AFE, but I think he's been to more consistently. I, I'm pretty sure me and him have been to all the last three, three and a half years. We've been to the same ones, but uh, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I've i been to eight or nine. I can't. I'm, that's what I can give you. I Good. don't know. <laughs> I, I, Rennie, Rennie was there when I started, so fair enough. That's, that's all I know. So he said this might be his last rodeo yeah. um, in Texas, oddly enough. Um, but he said he started in Cancun, and I said, you know, Cancun's the next event. If you wanted to ride off in the sunset, end it where he started. But he said his uh, his body's saying, no, no yeah. you got you got one more, and that's it. No, I know Anthony's 40, so, like, if, I, if I'm still playing at 40, <laughs> like, take me out. Take me out. No, there's no way I'm not. I... I'm actually towards that kind of thing too. I'm getting it's going to be event by event now. I uh, this is my first season not playing uh, uh, summer ball like uh, semi pro uh, summer ball, and it's been pretty pretty nice uh, physically. And I I did have a sec- I have a second job in the summertime, um, bartender at a baseball game kind of a thing. So <laughs> I, I worked a lot of baseball games. I made a a good amount of money and I didn't miss uh football as much as I thought I would um for the off season and this whole year so far has just been um AFE games so hope like hopefully I can play in Mexico and uh play at one event at a time might have one more game in me I might have five or six kind of a thing so I'm not gonna I would never like narrow it down to a point but I know I got at least one more, hopefully after this. You know, a couple of years ago, I was talking with a musician friend of mine. He's a front man for a band back home. And he had gotten, you know, the home life, wife, a couple of kids, steady job. And he was still so passionate about trying to get the band to play. You know, I, I mean, they weren't going to go out on tour or anything. But it's like if you could play four events a year, one spring, summer, fall and winter, he'd be you know happy as could be and I asked him I said you know what do you think it's going to be that ultimately leads you 
to hanging it up, walking away, <coughs> whatever it is for musicians. And I said, is it something that you get burnt out on? And he's like, well, I don't think it's going to be my body. I don't think it's going to be my voice. But he said, for me, if there's ever a moment where I walk out onto that stage and I don't have those, even the slightest little bit of butterflies, you know, before that first note hits, then I know it's going to be time for me to walk away. So here you are sitting across from me talking about how you didn't play summer ball at all this year. And, and it doesn't sound like it was really a big loss. Is, so is football something you can get burnt out on? Uh, yeah. I just play football because it's fun. I like, I, I'm not one of those people that I don't have to play football um, to like fulfill um, my love for football. I like being involved. And I've already talked about uh, coaching um, with AFE, and I've already talked about coaching back home. And I, I, well, I'm kind of coaching. My, I'm an assistant for the Wisconsin Hitmen, the team I played for last year. But I've only been to a handful of practices and a couple games kind of a thing. So I love helping out. I like being around the guys. And that's what's, like, really keeping me going right now, the whole padding up and just getting after it. And it's uh, the, these games are really good for – when I work out, you know, you work out for something. So I work out as hard as I do, as much as I uh, can to be in shape for these games. So, that, I mean, that's that's a big um, thing that I have going for me that uh, keeps me going. But if I this if this is my last football game, if it was, uh, I won't have any regrets about not playing anymore. Really? Uh, yeah, no, not not really. It's uh, it's weird. Like it's gonna end one of these days, and I have a lot of hobbies. I love. I'm a big outdoorsman. I, I like. <laughs> I like doing. Tattoos. No, yeah. I, well, I, I love the outdoors. I like. Uh, like, I like spending time at home. I I love my job, and there's a lot more to life than football. But I like being around this family for the most part. Like, I love the AFE family, and like I said, if I want, it's not gonna suit up again. It wouldn't be the end of the world, but you'd see me back in some kind of a role, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I I guarantee I would miss it. I, if if I came back and coached, and I'm still physically able to play, of course I'm gonna miss it a little bit, but uh, it's not as much as I as you would think. Yeah, I get that. I get that. We were talking with uh, Coach White today, doing a feature on him because he's. Obviously, from Texas, we're playing in Texas, and he was one of the big key factors in making this whole thing come together. So here you have a guy who played for a really long time, coached, Hall of Famer, and now he's helping put events together. So, I mean, what's what's the Jesse Bernhardt ultimate goal? Could you see yourself doing that like to an extent, or is there another ultimate goal you have beyond AFE? No, there's no ultimate goal beyond AFE. Um, this is like, this was, in my football career, I never expected to be a part of uh, this organization or a family like this. I was just playing uh, some semi-pro football after college, um, and it just happened to bump into Coach Burns at a uh, at an all-star game, and then it just kept on progressing. I played one the first game in Myrtle Beach, and then kept on getting invited back, invited back, invited back. And um, and my role throughout that time has changed from uh, I'm in more of a leadership role. A lot of people um, look up to me, and I really appreciate that. And I don't want to let Coach Burns down, I don't let Coach G down. And I I really take a lot of pride in that. But, yeah, that's my, this is this was – the frosting on top of the cake was AFE, you know, <laughs> three, uh, four years ago, I never even would have thought that I'd be in a position like I'm in now. So yeah, I'm very blessed and to have this whole family behind me and supporting me in, in my football career for sure. That's awesome. So for you playing in the state of Texas, and obviously you've gone full Texan on us, yeah. but uh, I mean, we're talking about you guys who are Team USA All-Stars representing 18 different states playing in the biggest football state country 
next to Wisconsin, of course. <laughs> and you guys are playing the best from that state, you yeah. know, not counting yeah. the guys that you have on your squad yeah. from Texas. Like, is that a is that the level of competition that you seek constantly? It's yeah. Just like, yeah. No, I think it. that's the level of competition this whole uh, this whole program seeks. Like, we want to play. We've played a uh, um, league all star teams before from different states, and this is like the crown gem of that. And I think we talked about this before uh, over in uh, Virginia Beach about like the state of football is like Wisconsin or Texas. And I'm like, Texas, man, <laughs> like this is this is like a whole nother nature, uh, nature of the beast when it comes to football. So, yeah, it's it's definitely um, going to be one of our tougher games that we've played. It's um, and I feel for the guys from Texas that are on our, on our team. I'm so happy that they're on our team because um, if we played a tight team of guys of that caliber, a whole team of the guys of, the, of that caliber, it would be a dogfight. It would be. It's gonna be rough. <laughs> so um, I hopefully the guy. I know that the guys from Texas that we have, they got a chip on their shoulder. They got they got something to prove. You know? But yeah, I'm really looking forward to the competition tomorrow. Um, really, really excited. Yeah, football in Texas against uh, TUFA. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll be on the call. So I'm glad that you came back for yeah. another event and joined me here on the show, man. Always a pleasure. No problem. Thank you very much. All right, man. Thank you. All right, next up in our Get to Know You, first-timer Pierre Stewart. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? Doing pretty good. So we're in San Antonio for AFE. And... Obviously, we didn't have a chance to chat uh, in Virginia Beach. Were you in Virginia Beach? Uh, no, I had to back out. I had to back out. So what event is this for you? Uh, six, seven. Six or seven? Yeah, I've been there since the first Cancun. Nice. What keeps you coming back? The Brotherhood. Yeah? Yeah, that and travel. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't yeah. get much better than that. It doesn't get much better than that. How much of the country and the world have you seen because of AFE? Uh, because of AFE? Mm, maybe 5%. Oh, just 5%? Yeah. I've, I've only, only, the only thing that I've seen by being with them is Mexico. You know, everything else. I've been probably to every continent you can think of. <laughs> nice. You play ball all over? Uh, I played when I was in Egypt, just for recreational, but nah, just as far as just like visiting, when I was in the military, I visited a lot of places, but I lived in Egypt for two years after I got out. Gotcha. So, I see the the Longhorns shirt. You Texas native? Yeah, I'm from here, from Houston. Okay. From Houston, okay. So, just two short hours away. So, what does it mean to someone like you, you know? Texas native to play a game like this Saturday in Texas, the Lone Star Bowl. Uh, it's great. You know, I'm basically in my own backyard playing against people that I either used to play against um, in the different leagues or either the, a few of people that I play with and against uh, in the new league that we're in. So it, it's, it's definitely going to be a little, a little bit different for me. So is there already some uh, rivalry there between you and some of the guys on the other team? Uh, yes and no. You yeah. know, I heard this team got a lot of people from San Antonio. Uh, the San Antonio Titans, I think that is. I've never played them. San Antonio Raven has a couple people that I've played against. Um, but for the most part, the people from Houston, I played with a couple of them, and most of them I played against, so. Gotcha. What, um, you know, Saturday, obviously you're going to know some of the guys play football, but what has yeah. football meant to you? You know, how long has it been in your life? Um, Since I was about four or five. I've been playing it basically all my life. Played Little League, played middle school, high school, college ball, military ball, and that's in my pro. Yeah, was there a moment that you can recall that was like, it's either football or this or maybe this, but that moment happened. You're like, yeah, football's my calling. That's where I want to be. Mm, no. Really? No. <laughs> you always knew it was going to be football? Well, I mean, I've always I've always had football basically in my back pocket. Like, everything that I've done 
You know, rather if it was changing career paths, like I've always still kept football around because that was like for me, it was like a reliever for me, stress reliever, anger reliever, anything like that. Like that kept my mind, kept me sane. You know, and it always, that drive kept me going. So for you, what was another career path? Like where do you see yourself outside of football, after football? Uh, right now I'm going to school for radiology. Nice. Wow. Uh, for MRI, <laughs> CT, and x-rays. Um, hopefully within like the next three to four years, we're working on Houston to open up a sports complex. Um, it'll have an indoor football field, a basketball, actual workout facility. Um, so we're just trying to get the works in for that to get that up and going. And I didn't mean to laugh at it like that's a, a silly career goal to have. It's just you talk to football players, uh-huh. and a lot of them have uh, – there's sort of a pattern with mm-hmm. where their career is going to go. Either they're going to coach, they're going to mentor. Um, there's been one guy who was going to go into finance. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know if that's like as much of a correlation as the rest, but – they still want to be around the game, just yeah. have like a different impact. Radiology, man, that, <laughs> like you're yeah. gonna have to pretty much catch the replays of games on NFL Network because that's gonna be all kinds of crazy hours and just a yeah. workload like I couldn't imagine. Well, hopefully, you know, if I can get if I can get the sports complex up and running, then you know, it'll just be my own time, my own my own little deal with myself. Yeah, that's a great goal to have, man. So. Business minded and smart sounds like if you pursue a career in a path like that, radiology. Where did radiology come from? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no, it's really, better and better. <laughs> <laughs> I was because um, when I was in the military, I did uh, logistics and supply chain management. I was uh, I was a crew chief out there, so I flew around. Um, I was a machine gunner. I think one day. After I got I got back from my deployment in 2011, and that was the year that it was the hottest ever in Afghanistan. It was like 140 when I was there. Wow. Um, when I got back, I was like, man, I'm tired of just being outside. Like, I don't want to work outside no more. I need a desk <laughs> job. Um, I went to, I had to do medical before I checked out, and I was talking to one of the guys that had to do an x-ray on me, and he was like, man... It's like the easiest job ever. All I do is just sit down and take pictures. And I was like, yep, that's what I want to do. <laughs> so since then, you know, I've I've been doing that. I've uh, got my certification for x-rays. So I'm trying to get the other modalities, getting MRI, CT, PET scan, um, nuclear radiology, uh, nuclear medicine, and mammogram. That's that one. You know, if you just want to sit down and take pictures, there's a few other alternatives. There's a photographer. You could be an Instagram yeah. model. I mean, there's a... <laughs> well, they, I, I, I wouldn't mind, but I just need that steady income. There you go. You know, that at least I know that job, it'll never go away. They're always going to need people for that. There's a couple of former military guys that I've had the pleasure of speaking with that are on this team. In your eyes, what are some of the biggest similarities between football in the military and actually before you answer that have you played other sports basketball baseball basketball track uh more than just like a try it out thing yeah. like you pursued it for a while mm-hmm. so my understanding is that football is the closest thing to the military of any sport is that would you agree or would you disagree? Uh, yes i would agree only because of the structure you have more structure and yeah, it's more of a like for me i was in the marine corps so we was doing basically, you know, fire teams or you're having to be as a team, never leave a man behind. It's the same thing as in football. You know, you have, it's a team sport. And you have to be able to think and, and play as one. You know, basketball, you are just that one person. It's that I and team. You know, you have, you can be just that one guy versus me and a football player, and being a football player in a game, that one player cannot dictate an entire game by himself. He's going to need the other 11 people, the other 10 people to help him out. So what are the, uh, now back to the question, what are some of the similarities you see, the biggest ones that really stand out between military and football, other than structure? Is it uh, attitude, like a mental thing? Yeah, you have to have attitude. you got to be able to buy into the system. And it's just like being in the military. You have to be able to buy into whatever system that they, they want you to buy into. Um, a lot of people say that the military changes you. It does in a slight way, but 
Yeah, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Like you change you. The military can't change who you are inside. Like you have to be the one willing to make that change. And it's just like football. Like you know, they tell you to buy into our system. You know, you have to be a team player. But at the end of the day, if you don't want to change, you're not going to change. So you have to change who you are in order to fit into whatever system or program they have going. So do you ever see yourself? possibly coaching or giving back, you know, while you're still working on your radiology thing? Like, is that something yeah, that like you see I used to coach doing? the league, yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to. I want to coach high school. It's the only way they can get me around kids in the, in the States. <laughs> it's the only way. The only I thought way. about it. <laughs> yeah, I taught I taught kids in, uh, when I was living in Egypt. I taught uh, pre-K through third grade. So I love being around kids, but I just want to teach kids in the States. I won't do that. Fair enough. So... Radiology, running your own lab, mm-hmm. doing uh, athletes exclusively, or just that uh, would be your primary clientele, and you would be open to others if they needed it. Uh, I mean, it's it's for everybody. For everybody, at all ages. Um, the more so, it'll be more so around the athletes, but I mean, it's for all ages and all categories. <laughs> <laughs> what are you most excited about for Saturday? Uh, actually competing against guys that that are from here, you know, because we have a semi-pro chat that's basically um, all of Texas. We have some people from all over, like from other places, uh, Oklahoma, New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, Florida, Cali, that are in the chat with us. But uh, basically, man, just shutting them up, <laughs> you know, because everybody's <laughs> always saying, "Oh, well, you." You on the team, you know, I could have made that team, but obviously you wasn't selected, you know. Mm-hmm. So here's your chance to show that, hey, I can compete with the best of them. You know, I should be one of the ones that have that spot. You know, here's your chance to prove it. You know, so everybody back home know what I can do. So it's, it's it, it'll be fun. All right, man. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you out there, and uh, best of luck to you. I'll be on the call play-by-play for the live stream for any of your friends and family watching back home, even though I'm sure you're going to have a rather large crowd Yeah, this, being yeah, so close to close home. To yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, he is Pierre Stewart of Team USA for the Lone Star Bowl uh, tomorrow. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Do you remember the time that Mark Sanchez ran into his own player's butt? That was funny sports. Thank you for having me on the show, man. I love the fan show.